Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be working on a controller board for a robot I'm working on. I have no idea what I'm doing, so we're going to see what happens. So first thing I'm going to do is open this new project and add in the ESP32 chip. In order to get it to work, all we're going to need is a ground pin, a ground pin, a ground pin, a ground pin, and a 3 bolt pin. Next, I'm going to connect up TX and RX for programming the chip. In order to actually turn the chip on, it needs to be pulled high through the enable pin, so I'm just going to do that through a resistor, and then pull it low when I want to reset. Next up, I'll be using a second chip to act as the driver for things. To keep the schematic clean, we're just going to be adding a couple of labels, and oh, how did that get there? I don't know. So that the two chips can communicate with each other, I'm just going to be linking their arcs and TX pins through a couple of jumpers. This took me like 20 minutes to figure out how to make, but hopefully it should convert 5 volts into the required 3 volts. Next thing I'm going to do is add all the test pads so I can actually connect things onto the pins. And then after that, I'm going to assign all the footprints, and we're done. So now that we're done with the easy part, it is time for routing. So I still don't really know how to route properly, but what I like to do is just separate all the components into their own groups, and then I'll do them each individually, and then I'll connect them all together once I'm done. The first thing I decided to route is this 5V to 3V converter thing. It should be pretty easy because all the components will just be in the same area. Now that we're done with that, we can go ahead and start on the routing for the AT Mega chip. This is pretty easy because I've done it so many times already, so I shouldn't have any issues. These jumper wires are so that the RX and TX lines stay disconnected until we are done programming, and then I can connect them up so that they can communicate with each other. This board has a ton of output pins, so what I'm just going to do is sort them all into their own correct areas before I actually try to route anything. Unfortunately, the clip after this got corrupted and was completely unusable, so it pretty much skips past all the wire routing for this specific area, but I'll make it up in the next part. Anyways, what we're going to do now is connect up all the ground pads together so that everything is linked up and on the same plane. You don't really have to do this because I'm going to be using a fill plane anyways, but I like to do it anyways. Next thing we're going to route is this little enable resistor over here, so that the chip can actually turn on. Now that we did that, it's time for us to route every single one of these output pins. Get ready for some really bad looking routing. Now we are done, and based off of this routing, it probably has like a 30% chance of working. I am 
still gonna connect them up together because I don't really care. I've decided to set up a fill plane this time because I did not do that last time and apparently you're supposed to. So here's what the board looks like and now it's time to fill the layers. So after figuring out how to even use the fill thing and tuning settings for like 20 minutes, this is what I ended up with. I'm not sure if doing a grid fill is a good idea, but it looks cool and it, there was no errors, so I'm just gonna see what happens. And now we're done. I really hope you were not following along, because this isn't a tutorial and I have no idea what I'm doing. 